Welcome to the Jesse and Angela Love, Love Show. Show. Well, thank you for coming out this afternoon. We're glad for you to see our videos and we're happy to have you here. This is the month of October. This is the month that everyone should have their self checked for cancer. This is Breast, um, breast Awareness Month where cancer can be also embedded in the breast of men and women. Men, please go out and have yourself checked if there's anything that's unusual that's in lumps or anything that's unusual in your breast area, please have yourself checked because men do get breast cancer. So I'm going to turn this over to Jesse who's going to continue on with the message. Being Benitas, welcome to Jesse Angela's Love Show. The uh, title of this message is Prosperity Beyond the Grave. We're going to read from the book of the New Testament, the third, or we should say John 3 and 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. We can say it again like this. Beloved, I wish, which he meant what he was really saying, I pray, above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers that's what he was saying in the uh, modern english but we were coming from the king james version now that message going beyond the message going beyond the grave is a very important message but we're going to work on the, uh, the words like prosperity, prosper. Those words, they actually mean to have good success. You know what I mean? The journey that you take, it goes well. It's God, Godspeed when people say Godspeed and things like that. That's what that's saying. It's not primarily saying anything of the sort of money. Because most people that came in the church or come, you know, want to be born again, not thinking about money. They're thinking about their soul. They're thinking about life after this. They're thinking about uh, where they want to spend their eternal life after this life. The prosperity thing is, is said when people hear the prosperity and usually, like I said, mean uh, money. And you don't go to church to hit the lottery. You go to church so that you can hear about Jesus. You go to church where you can uh, congregate with other people that are Christians or those, those are wannabe Christians too, because a lot of people come that are not saved. A lot of people are in the church that have not been saved since for 20 or 30 years or whatever. They haven't made up their mind yet or they're not in the right church setting to get the right word. Because most people are teaching. And prosperity is one of the main things they teach. They use the term prosperity, which is, they, they use it uh, in a money-like thing. They figure, they tell you that if you give offerings and the Lord will bless you, you give tithes, the Lord will bless you. The Lord's gonna bless you anyway. The Lord's gonna bless you not only in those areas but the Lord is also going to bless you um, your body and the Lord is going to bless you in other ways but the main purpose of going to church is to hear the word the main purpose of going to church to hear preaching and teaching those are the main purposes and, and, and like I said congregation congregating with other Christians so that you all can strengthen each other, build up each other in this most holy faith. Following the doctrine, the apostle doctrine, which Jesus had preached about. Prosperity, when you see in the Bible, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's prosperity. And it says, first seek the kingdom of heaven. And all these things will be added unto you, unto you. So, prosperity is 
is, is your soul must prosper first. That's the most important thing because you have to deal with the afterlife. The afterlife meaning whether you're going after the Lord resurrect you and you, you both come the quick and the dead for judgment. You want to be accepted unto the Lord. You want to be in that kingdom of the Lord, which is prosperity. That's prosperity. Because Paul said that I fought the good fight of faith. If you look at the background of Paul and where he came from, remember his name was Saul at first, and how he was, the Lord spoke to him and let him know who he is. And Paul was converted into Christianity. And he was baptized and he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And Paul's prosperity was through all that he was going through, the ups and downs, the opticals, being burnt, being burned and being beaten. That, he, the, the prosperity that Paul went through, that was prosperity for Paul because he was very successful in his walk with the Lord. See, that's prosperity. That's good speed. That's good success when you walk with the Lord. And when you can say, I fought the good fight of faith. If when my life is taken, in other words, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I got something to rely on. I know that I'm written in the book of life. Paul said, I'm going to put on the crown. He already knew that the Lord was going to crown him, the crown of eternal life. You know what I mean? He was going to be with the Lord forever. He was going to walk on the streets of gold. I'm talking about this goal that does not have no kind of issues with it. Prosperity beyond the grave. That's what I'm talking about. You remember when Joseph in the Bible, Joseph, the young man that was 17, around 17 when he was taken. But you have to remember what the Lord had told him. The Lord had, you know, given him the revelation. The prophecy that he will uh, be over his people and be over practically everybody in the on the face or in that land or in that country at that time and they was going to bow down to him and you know that Joseph was in second command but look at his prosperity his prosperity didn't look like some of the you pastors call prosperity it didn't look like that because a lot of people uh, like that because they 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 want you to say what they want you to say and not what they need to know and along the way they're going to eventually call you all that preach that stuff liars some of them call you all pimps I've been in this thing we've been in this thing over quite what 30 something years and all I have done and all we have done has talked about salvation because the soul must prosper if the soul was already prospering why would Paul tell him to that the you know it's got to be an even thing it's, it's got to be an interchangeable thing where you in good health but your soul must prosper too where that you may get fed the word and you have the truth and you walking in the truth and you walking in um, uh, and meditating on his word day and night that's prosperity so when you do die when the Lord calls you to resurrect you from judgment to, for judgment you will be um, you're, you're written in the book of life not in the book of damnation and in the book of life you see that in Revelations 21 when you read it you'll see that these people don't have to worry about anything no more because the prosperity that they received was beyond the grave. Because he said, the dead in Christ shall rise, and them which are alive shall be caught up, in some words like that. So the dead in Christ, the ones that were saved and died, they that was prosper, prosperity beyond the grave, because they get to be with the Lord. They don't have to worry about lights. They don't have to worry about payments. They don't have to worry about that body they have anymore because that body that they're going to have is a, a mortal body, a body that will not never get sick, won't have to worry about hunger, won't have to worry about can they see at night, they don't have to worry about can they see in the morning, 
They don't have to worry about um, their um, people attacking them. They don't have to worry about people don't like them. Because these people that's going to be there are people that have love for the Lord Jesus Christ and for love for their neighbors and everything. These people are saved people. It won't be any enemy. It won't be any murders. It won't be no adulterers. It won't be any of those things in the kingdom of the Lord. And it's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That's the prosperity beyond the grave. We have to think beyond this world. We have to be, think beyond that. We have to want to travel beyond this life. When we die from this, you don't have to worry about it. you got cancer, whatever, and the Lord didn't deliver you. Well, the Lord going to deliver you from this life, and you shall reap eternal life. That's prosperity beyond the grave. You fought the good fight of faith, and you can say it. That's why people don't worry about it, because they know the body is, is going to break down eventually. And they know that body is not going to always be like it always, all what you want it to be like. We're not in that in the beginning where it was like that because our forefather, our great grandfather and great grandmother had um, um, messed that up, you know what I mean? But that's why the Bible would say, Jesus would tell in the Bible say, hallowed be thy name, the prayer. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. And, and in most people, this is what Christianity is about, what we are doing. We're not talking about, um, you don't have to worry about that, that we're going to talk about, uh, well, you plant this seed, you send us this and that, uh, the Lord is going to bless you. Many people have done many things and have lost everything. And uh, going back to Joseph, Joseph's life wasn't all that great. His brothers didn't like him because he did the right things. None of his brothers liked him. They hated him, knowing that he was going to be over them eventually. Didn't look like it. He did the right things and still went through slavery. First, he was thrown into the thing, in the pit. That could have filled up. Things could have got in there, got him. Um, he was uh, sold into slavery. They was going to kill him first. But the, the oldest brother told him, no, read that Bible. Read that part. It's in Genesis. And... So he went through that, and then he went through, and you notice how it was prosperous for him regardless where he was. He was a slave, he was prosperous in, as a slave, he was prosperous as a, um, a, the, um, he was the uh, potter, what, I'm, I'm not confused about it, but he was prosperous as in the house of um, his, the, uh, yeah, his, yeah, his master. And that's what I'm trying to say, I don't want to get into the, the deep into that area. But he was prospering wherever he was. He was prosperous in prison when he was dumped, dumped in the prison because of the, uh, the, his uh, master's uh, wife wanted him. So she, he, she couldn't get him because he had his mind on the Lord. He could have did, did, he could have did those things. But he said, why would I do something like that? And the man had put me all over everything. And he told me, don't mess with my woman. And he put me all over this. Why would I do something like that to him? She couldn't understand why he didn't do anything. Somebody else, yeah, that didn't know the Lord, yeah, they would jump right on him. And died in their sins as well. But he did what the Lord, and he still got put in prison for something he didn't do. And then in there, he blessed folks in the prison. He still had leadership in the prison. He still had visions in the prison. You can be put in a situation and still have power, still have revelation, still prosperous. But it doesn't look like that to most people. So they're going to tell you some so-called pastors with titles of bishops and all of that. They're going to tell you what you want so they can get your money. They're not going to tell you that because of your ministry, because of the gift that God had given you, you're going to have to go through different things than your brothers and sisters in the Lord are going to have to go through. It's not going to be the same. And if he was some kind or she was some kind of pastor that was anointed by the Lord, they would see that that person is going to be 
uh, called to do some things for the Lord greater than some that of other people, just like Joseph. So Joseph was called, and it was all the setup. And all of that, how could a slave become second in command in Egypt? Explain that to me only by the power of the Lord. And that's what I'm talking about. Even when he died, his bones was taken out of Egypt. He was a prophet. He knew that the Lord was going to deliver Egypt from, I mean, the Israel from Egypt. And in prosperity, all the good men and women knew on eternal life it seemed to be. It seemed like they knew something. Isaiah knew about Jesus before Jesus had came to this world. Isaiah was so caught up, he knew prosperity was beyond uh, the grave. And you see that he's Elijah, hallelujah. He walked for the Lord, he walked before the Lord. He was a great man of God, he was a great prophet of God. He was, a, he was something else. And, and the Lord used him down there. And the Lord, he had so much anointing, and the Lord took him. He took another young man too. Remember the man that the Lord took when he was, he, the, he was too good for this place? The Lord took him too. Cause see, prosperity beyond the grave. He took him from his family members and everything. Elijah was taken and not taken by death, but Elijah was just changed, transformed. In, in, into a mortal body. Angels came and got him. It's prosperity beyond the grave. So whatever you go through here, Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. Don't worry about it. You're gonna, you can, it's gonna be all right. You keep on doing the works of the Lord. Look at Paul. Paul did the works of the Lord all the time. Paul always, even when Paul was, it, Paul didn't stop doing it. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't worried about the uh, consequence. Many people are worried about the consequence. So they hide Christianity. They hide this. I don't hide Christianity. I don't deny Christianity because of my flesh and no other reasons. I'm not going to deny Christianity. And I'm not going to talk, stop talking about Christianity, even if we had a government that says, you cannot have the freedom of speech. I will continue to talk about and preach or teach about Christianity. You have to understand that you have to um, receive the word. Sometimes the word is not pleasing to you, but it can help you. Going beyond uh, prosperity, beyond the grave. That was the title of the message. I hope everyone enjoyed this because we are in the time where we've seen the government is going through a lot. We see how we're having a hard time with our workplace. We're probably having some hard times in our home for families and, and other things that might be going on within. And you just have to understand that if you stay faithful in Jesus and you keep, like they say, keep a good fight of faith, I mean, you keep fighting to the end, no matter how miserable it may be or how strenuous it may go, it may go through, we just ask you to continue to keep the word of Jesus Christ within and, and always remember that prosperity from the grave is a powerful, powerful statement because once we are taken from this place, the judgment from the Lord Jesus Christ will make the statement, are either we going to heaven or hell? Depends on how we've done in the, in the midst of his presence on earth. So if we are not doing the things that we should be doing and ministering to others who is in need, not talking about prosperity as far as money, and riches and all that that's that's not what we're talking about we're talking about spiritual richness and be able to be with the lord jesus christ when that time comes so we just hope and pray that this ministry will continue to help and fulfill your spiritual needs and that you continue to look for us on youtube the new stream so that you will be able to be fulfilled and be able to tell others about the goodness that jesus has done in your life Mm -hmm. We love you and we want yes, to continue on to bring this message out to you so that everyone who hears it, hears the word of God coming through us who is using us. So we glorify Jesus for all he done and allowing us to be here this day. And once again, we love you, we thank you. Yes, we do. And we just say this is the month of October. Please get yourself checked. 
for cancer. Doesn't matter if it's breast cancer, it could be cancer of any place else. But we just need you to get yourself checked and make certain that you keep on top of your health. We love you and God bless you. God bless you.